Well, hello everyone. If you'd like to see my makes for the last, oh, I think it's 10 days, and what I've got coming up, stay tuned. Hello everyone, and welcome to my subscribers. I'm Deb, and this is DB Designs and Sewing Australia, and a big welcome if you're new to my channel. Today I'm going to show you what I've made in the last 10 days, which is not very much. I've got some things on the go. I have made two garments. Now the first garment is a Stina skirt by Atelier Jeux. This is the third Stina skirt I've made because I absolutely love it. It's this pattern here if you remember. Now I made the Stina skirt in a Lady McElroy Chloe Chambray which is called Life in Venice Powder Blue. I will insert photos of me in it. The only problem is I can't tell which is the back and which is the front. And believe it or not, I have got a label in it. Yes, but my label is happens to be a light blue one, and so it's hard to see. So this is the skirt. It's pleated all the way around and has an elastic waist. But as you'll see, it's not a terribly gathered elastic waist. And for me, I've only got to have it so that I can get it over my hips and I'm in inverted triangle shape. So my hips are quite narrow compared to the rest of me. And it has beautiful hidden side pockets. So when I say hidden, there's all the pleats. It looks like a pleat and the pocket is actually inside the pleat. So the pocket doesn't start until back here inside the pleat and it's fully lined. And I think the, the lining, of course, is not pleated. The lining is like an A-line skirt. And I think that is what makes the Stina skirt hang so nicely. I was not really much of a skirt wearer, but found, um, I think the first skirt I made was the Genoa Bias Cut skirt. But the Chloe Chambray, like the um, Atelier Jupe Viscose, is a heavier fabric. It's not your really light, lightweight viscose and it's beautiful for this skirt. So I've made, the first one I made in Atelier Jupe Viscose, the second one I made in a, I think I made it in a medium to heavyweight linen, a plain pink one. And I've actually, I actually wore that in winter with a jumper style with a jumper so this skirt is lovely really happy with it and I make just for reference I actually make the size 42 but I don't use the patterns measurements for elastic of course because it's for me and so I can just try the elastic on my waist and know that's the right amount and thread it through now I haven't stitched down this elastic but I didn't stitch down the other two either and I've worn those skirts quite a bit and it's never rolled. So um, really, really happy with how this fits and the firmness of it and how it doesn't add a lot of bulk to your hips because I guess that's an issue for a lot of people, that skirts. And that's why I tend to pleat things and not gather them because I don't want it to look like especially a dress. I don't want it to look like a maternity dress. So I will often pleat it so it sits flatter rather than gathering it. So that is my Stina skirt in the Lady McElroy Life in Venice. Now the second thing I've made was a white t-shirt to go with it. And I actually, I have had this pattern for years and years and I had never cut it never used it. So this is the Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons. And I ended up making, I ended up making a size five. And in hindsight, I probably should have made a size six, but when I laid out the pattern, I laid on top of it another t-shirt pattern that I use all the time. And so it mirrored the size five um, in Tilly and the Buttons. So you can see there's a fair few different versions there. I just made this version, but with the shorter sleeves. So I didn't do um, the tucking on the sleeves or the tucking in the center front. 
And this is the t-shirt here. I got this fabric from Tazuti. And they just called it a cotton jersey, but it's very, very clingy. It actually, it feels beautiful to the touch. It's beautiful fabric, but <clears throat> I think maybe I need to take more notice of what the fabric is like when I choose what size I'm going to do, because I think if I had sized up, hopefully it would have been a bit looser. So the problem I've got is that, is that it's very clingy, very cling, clingy. So it presses up nicely, really happy with the outcome of the t-shirt. I think it looks really nice. It's not too wide on the shoulders and, but it's just, you know, around the back under your bra, just a little bit clingy there, but really happy with it. And the fabric is really nice to wear. I think it might be nice if I wore a vest or a vest jumper over the top of it so that you couldn't see what I don't want to see in through it. So that was my two completed makes of late. And what I've got on the go is um, a yoga bag for my sister. And I've been using the embroidery foot to um, outline some of those features. So you'll see like that. Now, this is bag foam that I've done this on. And so she chose this fabric for her yoga bag. So you can see I've been outlining some of the things haven't started on the body of the bag now generally you would cut this bag out all in one piece but because the fabric was directional and i didn't want any of the things in paris to be upside down i actually put a seam in it so i joined the pieces together like that so this will run in this direction this will run in this direction so that's her yoga bag. Now I'm, let's just call it loosely basing. It will have end pockets. She said what sort of pockets and all that type of thing that she wants. Now it's loosely based on this yoga bag by, is it by, yeah, patterns by Annie. I bought this pattern for it, but then she has a towel rolled up inside her yoga mat and all that sort of thing. So I got her to measure the width of her yoga mat so that I could make sure that it had plenty of room in it. So I will make um, a couple of inside pockets for it. I haven't decided what color zip I'm going to put in the top. Now, these are zips with two pulls, so you can have it joined up in the middle and you can open it like that or you can open it all to one end, whichever way you like to do it. And this is what she chose for the lining. So she chose the fabric and the lining. This is gorgeous fabric, really pretty fabric. It's just a, uh, this is actually a poplin fabric. We did look in the um, quilting section, but she liked this one better. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. And so I have got much better at doing that embroidery and that's why I was practicing on the ends. And so it's been quite good. A bit of fun, really. Um, I don't really do very much quilting. And when I do quilting, it's often for things to sell. So you, you're going really fast and I'm just doing diagonal lines in both directions or I'm doing like crazy quilting. So not trying to actually follow around the edges of things. So that's been quite good. Bit of fun, I'll show you that when it's finished. And she doesn't want the strap that goes, you know, from end to end, so your bag's this wide. She doesn't want the long strap that goes that. She only wants these straps so that she can just put it over her shoulder, but then they turn into handles. And she's quite short, so she doesn't want them really long because then when she holds it actually in her hand, it will be too close to the ground. 
So I've got very good instructions from her um, as to how she would like the bag to be, which is fine, which is good because that way then you get what you want and it is a gift for her. So the other thing I'm in the middle of making is these bathers. Now these are the Cottesloe bathers by Megan Nielsen and I'm making view B, <clears throat> which is just the front and the back. So when you look at view B, it's this one here. So front and back. And what I have had trouble getting is the elastic. I don't know which elastic to use. I did have a go at sewing some elastic in, got in about three inches and took it out. Um, I would like to be able to master it enough to be able to just sew the elastic in on the cover stitch machine. But that's seriously not going to happen with the first pair. Now, I did put a shelf bra in it. And I don't know if a shelf bra is enough for me, being an old chook. But I wanted to see how it worked out. So these are the front of the bathers. And this fabric I got from um, 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 I can't remember where I got the baby fabric from, but I got it as a, a like a kit, like a little set of remnants. And so it's been really good because one, I want to see exactly how much fabric I need so that I don't overbuy it. And two, I sort of wanted to practice and see how they'd work out and get the exact fit. So this is a normal pair of bathers. Um, it's got shoulder seams. This is where the shelf bra is. The shelf bra is all part of the shelf bra is all part of the inside like that. Now I already had this underwear elastic, I guess you'd call it. Um, and some lining fabric as well. So the shelf bra is made of power mesh and the lining in the crutch is just made of normal swimwear lining. It's not stretched, it's not supposed to do anything, it just gives you a crutch. I made the size 12. You can see I haven't cut into my pattern, I've made my own pattern pieces. So I made the size 12 and I sewed the shelf bra in because I wanted to see what the length of it was because I'm only five foot four and I've got a very short waist or I'm very short between the bust and the waist. I did have to make an alteration on them, which I did have to pull apart because I'd shown the, sewn the shelf bra in. So um, I only had to make a change on the shoulders. So the front was fine, but it pulled forward. The shoulder seams were coming forward to about here. So I just measured that what that was and took them apart, cut that off the back shoulder, altered my pattern just by folding it over and taping it down. And it's actually, two and a half centimetres or close to one inch that I ta I've taken off the back shoulder straps, not the front. Now the front, I'm guessing your bust takes up some of that space and that's probably why I was pulling the shoulder forward. And the other alteration I made was I took a bit out of the back crutch. So just like that, in this pair, because I'd already cut them out, I couldn't take that tuck, of course. So I just trimmed a bit off and re-sewed it back together. And I'm guessing it also it comes from having a really flat bum, is that you've got much more on the front of you than you have on the back of you. So if I don't pull that crutch down further, then they're going to, um, well, creep up your bum cheeks, really. And if you've seen all the bathers that are out now, that's obviously the look 
but it's probably not a good look for a 63 year old. Just saying. People only want to see that really nice looking girls who I might add in Barwon Heads are walking down the street and have got hardly any clothes on. And then I just thought, I'm probably jealous because my bum doesn't look good like that. Um, yeah, oh, and when we're in Dramana, which is near the beach as well, so that's in fact across the road from the beach, all the girls, they've got... Looks good, but don't know that it's appropriate for in the shops, but, you know, it's Australia. People wear bare feet in the shops and they wear their bathers, so... So that's my attempt at bathers. Now, I did get some covered elastic that was called swimwear elastic, but I think I'm going to try the one that is just rubberized. If anybody can let me know what sort of elastic they're using in their swimwear, that would be really, really good. Yeah. So that's my, that's my progress so far with the swimwear, slowly. But I thought once I've mastered that, mastered how to put the elastic on, seriously, it can't be that hard, and got the pattern to be exact, then I can start to make pairs where I would alter them and cut the sides longer to make a ruched part that goes across your tummy and all that, and then make a pair that crosses over at the bust, decide if I need to put underwires in them. I prefer not to. But sometimes you need to do things. Decide if I need to um, power mesh the whole body of it. That'd spanks you in, wouldn't it? Um, so yeah, so that's really where I'm up to with the swimwear. I'm not rushing with it. I'm actually taking my time so that I then create a pattern that is really, really good and you can alter and know what you're doing. So I've got that on the go, plus my yoga bag. Now the other things I've got, and I haven't cut out yet. So these are a waiting cutting. The Soha 7, I think, a table V-neck. But it's actually this little vest that I wanted to make. And I've got this really nice... Chunky cotton knit, 100% cotton, and I washed it, which I always wash my fabrics. But when I was talking to um, Mikey from May Design, um, she said, make sure you wash this because it will shrink a little bit because it's 100% cotton. So <clears throat> I've got that to make up and I can see I've got white thread on my overlocker. So that might be a I'm going to do this very soon project because it's honestly not going to take very long at all. Now, the other pattern I found was a Simplicity K9111. Now, I have had this pattern for ages and I've been looking for a pattern of a skirt over pants. And as you can see from the line drawing, this is a skirt over pants pattern. So I'm going to give that a go. Now, many years ago, I bought this beautiful tencel from Blackbird Fabrics in Canada. And I've never used it. And I thought that would actually make a really beautiful skirt over pants. You can see the drape in that pattern and that tencel will drape really, really well. I probably will make a twirl of at least the shorts so that so that I get a good fit I know what size I should be making how much have I got I've got two meters and it says that I need two and a half yards and because I'm short I'm sure I'll be able to get that out of two meters so that's a project that I'm going to be doing now the next thing I've got is I have decided on a pattern for my Art Deco fabric. So remember I've got the Art Deco fabric and there's a beautiful trim that likes to escape. And 
This is just overlocking so that I could wash this fabric. This is a piece of chiffon. And I was going to have this sort of like that. So it comes down into a V in the neck. And I've ordered an Art Deco brooch that I'm going to have here in the front. And then I'm just going to have that draped over the back and probably put some of that trim on the end of that. So it won't be this much fabric, it will only probably be a small amount of the fabric because I think they are actually narrow. So I've been looking at Art Deco dresses to get some inspiration. Now the pattern I found is a Nerida Hansen half sleeve dress. Been really happy with her patterns. So, and when I got this in my little gift bag at Nerida Hansen Big Sewing Day Out, I thought, oh, that might be really handy for that. I think I will keep the round neck, but I'm going to make the back a V-neck. I'm going to make the back into a V-neck so that when that scarf drape, for want of a better word, goes over the back, it's like crossing over like that. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm waiting for my brooch to come because I've ordered it online. So at the moment, that's the pattern I'm using for that. Um, this viscose is not a, um, not a very lightweight viscose. So, um, I think it will be fine for autumn and I don't really take much notice of autumn colors because there are no autumn colors that I wear. So maybe black, but I don't wear browns, rusts, mustards. I'll probably wear some dark greens, but I don't really wear olive green. I'm thinking that would be a really good autumn dress, as in a good dress for going out. Now, the next thing I wanted to make, and I actually thought would look really good with the Steena skirt, is the Style Art Celeste woven shirt. Now, the reason I say that I think it would look really good with the Steena skirt is because I want to tuck it in. And if you tuck it in, you don't want it to be too blousy. You actually want it to be not a tight shirt, like the t-shirt is, but a a fitted shirt, so or a semi-fitted shirt, not a blousy shirt. So <clears throat> there's so much adjustment you can do through the body with all of those seams in that shirt that I was thinking I would do that. And I've just got some white cotton with no stretch. I'm not absolutely sold on the fabric. You know I like a white shirt, so I mean I get the wear out of it. Now I wasn't going to do buttons, I was actually going to do a closure like this. So I was going to do this hook and eye closure. I had two shirts, a black one and a white one, many years ago, 22, 23 years ago that had closures like this in the front and it, they, it made them fit really, really nice. And I did have a much bigger bust then. And because they're so close together compared to buttons, it actually holds your shirt closed really, really well in the front. Saves me stitching it down, um, which is what I do. This dress, which is all bunched up, that's all stitched down and the buttons are just for effect. So. Uh, many, many of my dresses, if I can get them on, um, I don't do the closures. I can get the Armadale dresses on and off without uh, undoing them. So then it eliminates any gaping you might get from buttons. Um, yeah, so that was what I was thinking about with that white fabric. Or I wouldn't mind getting some white cotton sateen you know, because it has a little bit of stretch or 
ease stretch as I usually call it. So it's not stretchy, it just has ease stretch in it like some shirting does. And but I really want it to be lighter weight than the heavy cotton satins that are around at the moment. So I'll have to go and see if I can get some of that or order some online. And the last thing I've got on my list is the Atelier Jupe Alana dress. And it's in this, once again, it looks like it's rust and something else. It's actually like a magenta and burgundy. So this is the Elantane at Zoe Flora Bordeaux. So Bordeaux, so it's burgundy colored, but it's burgundy and pink. So the Atelier Jupe dress and the one that the model is pictured in, which is the pleated waistband one. So I think I've got enough to go on with. Some of those things I will be doing a toile for. for. I will be doing a toile for the front half sleeve dress. And that will also give me an idea of how to cut the back for what I want it to be. Because I wouldn't mind it being quite a deep V, but uh, it can't be as long as your bra or anything like that. So, so I will make up, even in calico, um, one of these dresses and see, yeah, what I think about it and how I can change the V. So I just do the V with the facing. So, you know, you change the pattern to a V and then you just cut the facing off the pattern. So I will be doing a trial for that and I will be doing a trial for this skirt. Well, it's really pants. It's pants that zip up the back. Oh, maybe I've got this in a magazine because it says produced in association with so, somag.co.uk. So maybe it came in a magazine and that's where I got it from. But I was looking through my pants and skirts patterns and I looked around before and then I found that one. I thought, oh, I'll give that one a go. Yes, it's a back zip, which I do prefer a back zip than a side zip. Hmm, but I'd like to use an invisible zip, I think. I don't know what colour invisible zips I've got. Which means that I might need to order an invisible zip, YKK invisible zips. I wouldn't put a normal invisible zip or one that you can buy at Spotlight in pants at the back. It's just, it's just a fear of my zip's going to, I don't know, fail. It doesn't even have to be tight. When pants get tighter when you sit down, of course, but I can tell from all of the uh, summer in New York dresses that I've made, which have all got the side um, invisible zip. And I must have two with... The normal invisible zips, which are the ones with the nylon zip tape on the sides of it. And I've got two that have got, that are made with YKK zips, which have got the cotton um, zip tape on the side of it. And I've really found a very big difference when zipping those dresses up, how easy it is to zip up the YKK ones. And with YKK zips, you can get, like I guess you can in a lot of different brands, you can get uh, different weights of actual zipper teeth. So, you know, you can buy wedding dress ones, which are very thick, very um, substantial zips. And a lot of time you've got a lot sewn to them. You've got a lot of, you've got lining, underlining, the top fabric, lace, probably got some sort of beading that you've had to trim away from the edge of it. So you need a tough zip. You need to know that zip is not going to fail. Um, but I usually buy those ones from M. Reich in 
Abbots, I want to say Abbotsford, Collingwood, somewhere in Mel like in what we call the rag trade area in Melbourne. Because very, very important if you're doing uh, evening dresses that are often boned and so they're very firm fitting because um, because they need to stay up by themselves so you couldn't have them loose. And yes, you need a very decent zip for that. And I would highly recommend the YKK zips. That's the only ones I use. And um, I usually do get them from MRIC, but they are very hefty. So a much heftier zip. I think you can, you can it's, I think it's actually called coil size from memory. So it must be the coil size is the, the heaviness or the thickness of the zip and the strength of the zip. So, I mean, obviously the summer in New York, you don't need it. It's not a tight dress. It's not even tight around my waist. I've been wearing belts with all of them. But just ease of zipping it up, especially when it goes through a seam. So with pants, they don't go through a seam. Well, generally speaking, unless you put some sort of a yoke on the back of your pants, but they often don't go through a seam, um, but I've been in airport toilets when people have gone, oh my God, my zip is broken and it was an invisible zip. So, but you know, I could come to the rescue because I have a handbag full of safety pins. So I helped that lady pin her pants back on so that she could get on a plane. But really important that you use good quality zips. Good quality zips. I don't mind the lap zips that Birch make. And to be honest, I don't think I've used a, lap, a YKK lap zip, besides the fact that I use their denim zips as well. If you're going to the trouble of making jeans, seriously got to use a really good zip. Because why bother with all that work and then for your zip to fail or break? I haven't had a YKK one fail. I know what else I've got. I've got something that I can't show you because I'm doing a pattern test. So I'll show you that when it's all released. So everybody have a wonderful week. Please like and subscribe. Thank you to the people who have bought me a coffee through my Kofi account. I really appreciate your generous donation. I will talk to you all soon. Stay safe. It's actually going to be a hot summer's day today. I think it's going to be 40 on Wednesday. That'll be great. Everybody have a great day. See ya. Bye.